You know how when your mom tells you not to do something and it kind of makes you want to do it even more, right? Like your mom tells you, hey, don't put this R5C and the Sigma 2470 onto the new Zwing Cinem Pure Weeble 3E because it's too heavy and it won't balance and it's too big and it's too long and the whole balance thing will be thrown off. You're like, eh, is it? Is it really gonna be thrown off? Is it really not compatible? Like even though I looked on the list of officially compatible camera and lens models and it's like, yeah, this is not supported. You can't put the R5C and the Sigma 2470 on there. I'm like, mm, I'll try it. I'll take my chances. So I shot a whole event with it. Um, and uh, here's how it went. So over the weekend, we had an event to shoot. It was at Cinegear with Smallrig and we were shooting their video for their highlight video recap of the event. Uh, and we used the 3E along with the Canon R5C to shoot for the whole six hour day. Fun fact was that uh, when I first got this gimbal, I really thought that I could put the Canon R5C and the Sigma 24-70 onto this gimbal. Um, Cause I was using the, I'm using the Canon C70 and that thing is a big boy and that would definitely not fit probably on this gimbal. I kind of want to try it though. But yeah, it probably won't fit on this gimbal. So I was like, well, let's go smaller. Let's go, let's take the R5C. And I rented one out and I put that camera on this gimbal and I found out you actually can't balance it. Like you physically can't balance it onto this gimbal because the eyepiece in the back of the camera, it hits the back of this pan tilt roll axis thing. It just doesn't balance. So I balanced it as much as I could. Um, but just keep in mind that with the Canon R5C setup, it's still improperly balanced. Like there's no way to actually balance the whole gimbal. And then really quick, let's just go over the specs. I'm gonna put it right here. Good, cool, yeah, all right, cool. So even though that the Canon R5C was not able to properly balance onto this gimbal, it actually performed incredibly well. Like all the shots were super smooth. I was actually kind of surprised. Like I knew it wasn't balanced properly and uh, when I was using it, like I was panning, I was kind of tilting, I was doing the follow mode, um, it was surprisingly smooth. One thing that I've always loved about the Zoom gimbals is how this trigger button in the front is reprogrammable. That's one unique thing that I really love about this. So you can reprogram this to be like the follow uh, mode. You can go into the POV mode, the vortex mode. You can change this up to be whatever you want to. So that gives you a lot more like flexibility so that I can easily go from pan follow mode, which is the kind of default that everyone uses or I use a lot. Wait, let me just, uh, let me just put this on here really quick. EOS R balance. Okay. Okay. This is totally balanced guys. This is, oh shoot. This is totally balanced. Just don't look. So my default mode is in pan follow mode, which is PF right here. And so what I like to set my trigger to be is follow. So I tap it once and it'll go into follow mode, right? And then in PF, basically if you tilt down, the camera doesn't really tilt down. It just stays in place. That's pan follow mode. If you tap it once, it goes into follow mode, which I like a lot because then the camera actually follows exactly what you're doing. If you're tilting the gimbal down, then the camera also tilts down. I was mostly on the follow mode the entire day. Uh, pan follow mode, I used it here and there, but 90% of my shooting time was on the follow mode because I don't know, I just like it. I just like using the follow mode. I like being able to move the camera as I would if I'm shooting it with a uh, handheld, which is nice. The only thing that I could not do was this right here because the eyepiece would actually be bumping into the uh, roll axis in the back right here. So I just could not get past like right here. This was like the most I could maneuver in terms of like tilting the gimbal like that. Now when I was shooting the event, I actually did not do any like crazy customizations into the onto the gimbal, like no algorithm changes like to the deadpan, the pan speed or the follow speed or anything like that. So I just used it right out of the box, which was already really good. So it was very smooth. The reaction time of the gimbal was very fast. Uh, which I, in the future, I might actually lower that down just a little bit so it doesn't look too jerky. For me, I would like it to have a slower, little bit of a slower reaction. So if I turn here, it should have like a half second lag before it turns. 
the camera, if that makes sense. So for me, that, I find that creates a bit more of a cinematic, more cinematic footage. Now coming from a bigger setup, like the DJI RS3 Pro and the Canon C70, those are those are chunkier equipment. Those are chunkier gimbal and, uh, and a cinema camera. Coming from that and then going to some things that's so small, like this thing fits on an A4 sized piece of paper when it's folded up. So it's very small and it's also really light. When I picked it up, I was like, huh, my shoulders aren't dying. My, uh, my, my wrists, my hands, my arms aren't dying. Like my back isn't dying. This is, this is a nice little change of pace. This is nice. I can shoot on this for like hours and hours and hours. So in terms of battery life, I used up about maybe 50% of the battery on a six hour shoot. And again, this, this, this whole setup was not properly balanced. So the fact that it lasted that long for a six hour shoot, you know, uh, it's pretty good. So I would imagine if you had a lighter setup, if you actually properly balanced it, it should last you about 16 hours max. Um, of battery. So that's probably gonna cover pretty much all your shooting needs for the whole day. If you're shooting more than 16 hours, you're kind of crazy. I don't, I, I don't know. You got a long event or something. That's, that's kind of crazy. I really like this uh, OLED screen because when I was shooting, I found myself looking and checking to make sure how much battery life I had left and also which mode I was on. That was really important to be able to quickly see and glance at it and be like, okay, I'm in pan follow mode. I'm in, or I'm in follow mode. So that's nice. So if I click it, it will just show you F, which means follow mode. I click it again, it's gonna be pan follow mode. And then apparently there's a native portrait mode switch, which uh, it's like you can mount it vertically. I've never done it and I probably won't ever use it on a, uh, on a gimbal, um, but let's try it out. I'm gonna put this thing to sleep. Uh, uh, it's balanced, by the way, it's balanced. It's balanced. Don't, don't look, don't look, don't let's try it out. Let's put the, uh, how do you do this? Let's put it into, portrait mode. So you're going to take what this off, take this off. Okay. There's a little pin right here. Is that, Oh, Oh, okay. And then it just, okay. Let me close the screen right now. Okay. So then there's that little mounting uh, point right here on the side. So we're just going to, is it, it goes like this. Oh, Whoa. Whoa. Okay. Okay. So then it just goes like that. <gasps> oh, Oh, that's cool. So there's the knob at the to lock it is right here. Okay, so now it's not going anywhere. Oh, wait, this is so easy though. That's cool. Okay, so that's how you do it. That's how you switch from horizontal to vertical. There's an auto tune function, which I really like. I think all gimbals need that, where it will adjust the strength of the motors according to the weight and the payload of your camera and your lens. That is really nice because you're now letting the gimbal determine what motor strength it should set itself to in order to properly operate this camera and lens combo. Like the gimbal is actually doing tests so that you don't have to guess. Should I set it to low motor strength, medium motor strength, high? Uh, there's no guessing anymore. So now you're able to just let the gimbal automatically do its thing and you're good to go. All right, Bluetooth shutter control. This gimbal has Bluetooth connectivity, which means that you can connect the gimbal and your camera via Bluetooth and you can control the camera via the gimbal using Bluetooth, which is kind of cool. So now you don't have to use that uh, connector or USB-C to the USB-C cable to connect it to your gimbal and your camera anymore. So now you can, okay, I haven't done it. I haven't done it yet. So let me try to do that really quick. Mode menu, where's connected cage, Bluetooth remote menu, Bluetooth connect. Oh, that was fast. Oh, wow. So it's literally just a couple button presses. So you have to turn on the Bluetooth on your camera and then pair it onto the gimbal using, you know, through, go through the menu, go through there and then go to Bluetooth shutter. And then it would det automatically detect the camera already. Like it's already, it was already there when I opened up the menu. So now if I, I should be able to just record, I'm gonna press record. Wait, is there, okay, Let's press record. Whoa, it's actually recording. Whoa, that's cool. Oh, it also has like half press too on this, on this button, half press to like focus or whatever, right? Now it's getting focused, full press it. You can, there's like a haptic feedback. There's like a, like a double pressing kind of thing. And then it actually records onto the camera. That's pretty cool. Okay, not bad. Okay, okay, Zhuying, I see you. So one thing to note is that the Bluetooth on your camera is gonna drain the battery a little bit faster. So just kind of keep that in mind as you're using Bluetooth, um, obviously the, Longest battery, the bad, most battery saving option is to just connect it via the cable. But you know, 
if you don't like the cable or if you don't have a cable, the Bluetooth functionality is also pretty nice. Oh, this is cool. One thing I would love to change is I would love to change this uh, whole part right here with the joystick and the two buttons right here, like just to the bottom, like below the uh, OLED screen right here. It's nice, it's fine, you know what I mean? Like I can, I can reach it with my thumb, but it's just a little awkward because I have to go over here a little bit. Like I've kind of had to reach a little bit in order to get to the joystick and the record button and the menu or the mode button right here. I would love it if it was like just down here where my thumb would naturally be. So I can just kind of like, right, go like that operate joystick, press buttons and like that. Um, they have it on the older models, but minor thing. It's all, it's a minor thing. All right, so ultimately, who is this gimbal for? I recently had someone who was shooting real estate videos ask me, hey, what kind of gimbal should I get? Uh, I'm shooting with my phone right now and I kind of want to upgrade to something a little bit bigger. I want to shoot on an actual camera and maybe get a gimbal so we can get better looking shots. This is a gimbal that I would highly recommend to someone who is in that position, right? You're, you're trying to upgrade your camera, your footage from a smartphone to an actual mirrorless camera, like a smaller actual mirrorless camera. This would be what I would recommend. Uh, something budget, something nice and easy to use. Uh, and it's very light and it's not very fatiguing. You can shoot for a long time. This is it. This is the Weeble 3E. So if you wanna learn more about this gimbal, I have a link down below, check it out. It's a great first entry level gimbal if you're looking for something like that. So, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. I'm gonna go play pickleball now. So I'll see you later. My name is Alex Chung, and I'll see you later. Bye. <laughs> yeah. This is gonna be fun, this is gonna be fun, this is gonna be fun. Yeah, that's a good gimbal. Good little gimbal.